What's up there everyone? So as some of you might know from another video that I made uh, about four months ago, I survived a sudden cardiac arrest. 19 February 2021, when I was at my girlfriend's place, I uh, died in my sleep. Uh, that's when I had a sudden cardiac arrest. Luckily, I was next to someone, my girlfriend, and it's actually so crazy whenever I think about that night, because most of the time, like 90% of the time, I'm sleeping alone uh, at my own place. It was crazy that just that night, that moment, I was not somewhere in the mountains, I was not alone, I was in a city next to someone, my girlfriend, and that's when I had a sudden cardiac arrest. I actually wanted to wait in the beginning um, until six months before making actually a video about this. But I'm now actually at a point here uh, after four months that I feel recovered. And I'm not saying that I'm completely recovered, there's probably still some things going on a lot of times, you know, like even with a physical wound, when it's completely recovered, it, it can take quite a lot, a uh, long time, like maybe even over a year or something before it's completely healed, right? But I feel right now, after four months, that I am, that I feel recovered, that I feel good, that I feel like myself again. And that's why I felt like, right, let me not wait for six months, but let me make this video now. This last four months, I kind of collected, you know, everything of all the questions that I was able to ask that I want to answer to whoever is going through this as well, who is lying in the hospital right now, as I was looking for information. Of course, for any parents uh, or girlfriends or boyfriends to whoever this happen to help answer some questions for you too, to better be there for them. So I have a little structure um, for this video, uh, which I will put in the timestamps down below in the description. So you can kind of click and go to any point that you feel where you want a certain answer on. To just kind of explain the structure a little bit, I want to go through the often asked questions I've gotten, but then I want to go actually in depth into more the um, living with an ICD and having gone through uh, a sudden cardiac arrest and the whole experience of that and everything that you can kind of expect to feel and what might happen. Then I want to go to a big one that I actually was really worried about that I couldn't do anymore, which is sporting for the first time. And I kind of want to share how that felt. And then number four in the structure is uh, advice actually that I can give to someone who had a cardiac arrest and who is living now with an ICD. Number five of this structure is um, basically where I just want to answer how life has been in general right now where I am. Again, timestamps can be found in the description, but let's kick off this video with the first thing that I said, which is uh, often asked questions that I've gotten. Now, the truth is that they don't know. They're still doing research on me, so I still have to go to the hospital a few times for that. Uh, so I think in, I mean, because I want to make in a couple of more months, because I kind of want to document the journey a little bit, also for myself and to share it out there in the world for other people going through this, I will likely have a better answer or hopefully at least, um, yeah, a better answer on this in the next video that I will make. Uh, but right now, yeah, they don't know. Um, I do have a heart disease, so I have a heart arrhythmia, which is basically, I mean, the one that I have is basically that I have too many heartbeats. Um, but this is not per se the reason why the sudden cardiac arrest happened. That's, you know, the heart arrhythmia, heart arrhythmia uh, is going on there, so it's doing its thing the whole time. You know, it doesn't per se explain why there uh, was out of nowhere suddenly um, an electrical problem. Like something triggered some kind of electrical problem in my heart and they don't know exactly what. That's kind of what I can, can say on this. Um, I can't really add more than that to it. 
Uh, but hopefully in the next video, I will have a better update on this. So, <laughs> I don't really have an exciting answer on that. Uh, I didn't see anything or anyone. Didn't see my dad. Didn't see my great-great-grandfather and grandmother. I, uh, yeah, I didn't see anything. Because I was asleep, it I didn't feel anything. It just happens. And if you see people um, who have it when they're awake, you just kind of, you just fall. And you, you just... You're dead. I mean, so yeah, it's you, you don't feel anything. For anyone who wants to know a little bit about what a, a sudden cardiac arrest is or what a cardiac arrest is, a lot of people know what a heart attack is, which is an attack, you know, on the heart, uh, which you can feel coming. You, I mean, that's why sometimes you see people going like this because they feel a heart attack happening. Uh, but a heart attack is more to do with um, the blood flow to the heart. And a sudden cardiac arrest is more of an electrical problem with your heart. So when it happens, you just, your heart shuts down and everything shuts down. And then if you don't get any treatment, um, then you die in just a couple of minutes. Uh, then it's over. I mean, yeah, it hurts in the beginning. Uh, although, well, maybe that's not the right way to say it. it. It's not like it hurts, actually, too much. It's more in the beginning that it's kind of like you will notice it and it's a little bit strange to have it in there uh, also just seeing it right now uh, for everyone where you see something a little bit sticking out of your skin it's quite strange in the beginning it looks like some kind of rock it's like hanging out <laughs> um, but you get used to it to the sight of it um, and then you also get just used to having it. Like, I don't notice it uh, at right, right now. After four months, I don't notice it. But the first month or two or three, yeah, you notice it. Um, but it gets better, you know. Uh, it gets better. And that's really, really great to say. Um, and to know <laughs> as well that you don't really... From day to day, I actually... There's not a lot of times now that I kind of think about it or that I notice it. Having kicked off this video with some often asked questions that I've gotten, I want to dive into, you know, why I really wanted to make this video. One thing that's really, really important to know, after an hour or two of working or reading or talking to someone, I felt just dead tired. I was so exhausted. And I was really scared, actually, that it was always going to be like that. But I want to emphasize, because uh, I struggled so much with that, that it is normal and that it will go away. Also, getting used to the medication, which also... Um, I mean, you will also feel tired of the medication, but your body gets used to the medication, of course, so you get better and you will feel better after a while. But those two, the combination of having, of taking medication that my body is not used to and then uh, of having gone through a sudden cardiac arrest and the injury to my brain and recovering, like my brain recovering from it. Yeah, that combination made me really tired uh, for basically two, three months the whole time. Besides feeling exhausted, I also felt very unfocused. I mean, that's because of the exhaustion, right? Felt very disorientated the whole time. I, it was like like being drunk. I felt like that for, I mean, the first two months, it was super strong that I felt like that. I just mainly wanted to make you know that it's super normal to feel those things and that they will go away it's normal that you will forget things like your short-term memory uh, will have been um yeah it will be, have been affected i forgot so many things uh mainly that i said to my girlfriend or to my mom or or to my sister or to my stepdad or friends like that I repeated myself all the time uh, or often that I was like, oh, hey, um, this happened or, oh, um, you know, let's do this together or whatever. And I already said it a few days ago or something or, or something that happened in a hospital that I shared, uh, which I already shared apparently the day before. These things will happen. And they're frustrating because when I said it, I was like, huh, did I say this also like yesterday? 
I wasn't like sure sure, <laughs> but it was somewhere there in the back of my mm, brain that I felt it, that I did say it, but I wasn't completely sure. Of course, it all depends, right, on how fast they were there. Uh, so there's so many varieties of how someone will be affected from having survived a sudden cardiac arrest. I can't give you exactly the months or 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 that it is completely normal, because uh, I don't know the situation that you're in, um, but I'm sharing my experience, right? And hopefully it can help you with your experience. Uh, but yeah, talk to doctors, of course, right? Um, call them, they are there for you. They will understand that you have another question. So just go and ask as many questions to them as you can, uh, they will understand. You will, I mean, you will notice it the first few weeks, months to have this ICD there. If I'm honest, it's still weird when I look at it or it's still weird when I touch it. And not weird that it's painful when I touch it, but more weird that it's just strange to have something in your body that's not supposed to be there. Also, in the beginning, they told me that I couldn't really raise my arm above my shoulder because the wires will s were still like uh, getting sort of attached in my body uh, so that takes i don't know i think a couple of weeks that i couldn't really put it up like a week or two or a week or something like that so all in all other than the fact that you will notice it in the beginning and that your arm or that area here is gonna be a bit stiff it after a couple of, you know, after a month for sure, or after two months, uh, it will be way better. And now after four months, it, it's, it's at the point where I don't notice it much at all. And I'm sure once we're at a year that it's basically going to be a part of me. So good thing to know. If you are about to get an ICD or if you just have one, that it might be something that you're worried about. Like, can you still sleep normal uh, with it? And the answer is yes. Um, in the beginning, you know, of course, uh, you can't really lay on that side here. So on your left side, or you can't really lay on it. So if you're like um, a chest sleeper, then yeah, you gotta get used to sleeping on your right side or on your back. That after a month or two is also pretty normal again. Uh, right now I can basically sleep on any side in any kind of position. The only moment when I am noticing it is when I am reading and I lay on my chest and I'm like going like this. Um, yeah, then this is kind of like popping a little bit out, um, but it's not hurting. Uh, that's the main thing again, like it's not hurting. It's a little bit like, oh yeah, it's there. That as well, uh, hopefully it will put you at ease uh, that, yeah, you will be able to sleep really like normal. They will ask you if you want a home monitor and uh, it looks like this, or that's the one at least that I have. Uh, there's different companies, different versions, uh, but this is the one that I've gotten. Uh, but basically, it's just a device to track your heart. Uh, this one, apparently, like my ICD, has a SIM card in it, and it works through SIM cards. Uh, so it communicates with the monitor, and that works together with the hospital, and they kind of gather this data uh, where they can use it to further analyze your situation and better understand it. Other than that, it's also something that when a wire, for example, because the ICD is connected with wires to your heart, if that would get loose or if there's something wrong with your ICD, the monitor will show that and it will show that you have to contact your doctor. I think it's really awesome actually that there is something like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think, I mean, you don't have to get it, but kinda, I would recommend it, I guess. I feel the kind of electricity running through it and it feels like someone is pushing from the outside, from the inside out, like it doesn't hurt, but it's really, it's like annoying. Like at times, certain days, it's like constantly for hours, 
and it's really annoying when I'm working and it's like happening the whole time. And uh, yeah, I called my doctor and it's uh, basically your ICD will perform tasks, uh, some readings to your heart and that's what you feel. Uh, so it's activating. Now, it doesn't seem like everyone is feeling that because uh, I asked this also on a forum uh, on well in the Facebook group. Uh, if other people were experiencing the same. I mean, quite a lot of people do feel it as well, but not everyone. Uh, but apparently you can ask uh, when you go to the hospital for a check-in that they can uh, put the strength a little bit lower uh, so you don't feel that too strong. And uh, with my next check-in, I will actually ask if they can do that. I just want to like give a heads up that that is normal, but that apparently you can ask them if you feel too strong to reduce it a little bit, the strength. Wearing a backpack kind of sucks a little bit now because it goes directly over, like the straps directly go, go over the ICD here. If you're carrying more of a heavier backpack, then it, I don't want to say it per se that it hurts, but it doesn't feel nice. You know, like you get used to it after a while once you have it on. Uh, but when you put it on for the first time, it like, yeah, it doesn't feel great. Uh, now I do have to add to that, that in the beginning it didn't, like it felt, it hurt more than it does now. Um, so it does seem like I'm getting more used to it. I'm now looking more at backpacks with more like a very um, soft padding uh, that seems to help. Yeah, play a bit around with backpacks, I guess, uh, but it does after some months it will feel a little bit better but you will notice it every time basically uh, that's so far at least uh, what i can say on that another good thing to know if you are about to get an icd is that the scar uh, will be small maybe this makes sense because it's not a big thing that they're putting in there uh, but it's basically a small yeah uh, cut that they make here and I mean right now mine looks really great in the beginning they put like stitches there uh, once the surgery was done uh, and your skin kind of feels more tight and I was like okay that's gonna be I mean I thought that that was how it's going to be but then actually when they took out uh, those yeah, it's not really stitches, but I don't really know how else to call it. But uh, once they took it out, my skin kind of unfolded. And it was like, oh wow, I have a lot more stretch all of a sudden there. The scar looks beautiful in a way that it's not very noticeable. So it's done really well. Another thing that you will get actually is an implantable cardioverter defibrillator card. Uh, <laughs> That's a long word uh, for basically yeah, a little card that you will get. It's an international identification card uh, that uh, you have to show when you go to the airport because then you can't really walk through the metal detector. I mean, like It's going to go off and that's where you have to show this. Uh, plus there's also the phone number of the physician and of the hospital. And so yeah, there's some uh, other additional good information on for yourself to, to use. One is a beta blocker, a beta blocker, uh, and the other one is basically like a blood lowering medication. Uh, so a beta blocker, uh, I have it written down here, are a class of medications that are predominantly used to manage abnormal heart rhythms and to protect the heart from a second heart attack after a first heart attack. Uh, beta blockers work mainly by slowing down the heart they do this by blocking the action of hormones like adrenaline. And then the blood lowering medication that I take, uh, basically how this works, your body of chemicals uh, that raise your blood pressure uh, and the blood lowering medication that I take is basically there to lower it. So it is for the blood vessels to relax them. That's the two medications, uh, the two ones that I take. I don't know for, I mean, I don't know which ones that you have to take or how many. Do definitely check in that the medication that you take, that you don't have to stop anything because I was taking a third medication, which was a, um, a stomach protector. And it was only when I went for my first check-in in the hospital and I mentioned it, like, do I still have to take this for some reason? 
that the the doctor was like, ah, yeah, no, uh, yeah, you don't have to take that anymore. But it was a little bit too casual. Just double check that the medication you're taking is the ones that you have to take and that there aren't any that you don't have to take anymore. It will take a little while for your body. At least it took a while for my body to get truly used to the medication. Uh, like feelings of exhaustion uh, like do come because of medication as well. But your body gets used after a while to the medication. But it took, I feel like, a couple of months for me to really get used to it. To already put you at ease, um, I mean, well, it's a little bit mixed, to be honest. Uh, there are, I mean, definitely certain sports that you just, that you are not allowed to do. This is more like contact sports, like any fighting sports. Uh, like jiu-jitsu or, 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 I don't know, Thai box or anything, you know, like that. Um, this is, yeah, just going to be in the way. Uh, you are probably not going to be allowed to do that. Uh, doesn't mean, of course, that they can prevent you from not doing it. You can still go and do it if you want to. Uh, but it's just, especially with, like, uh, something like jiu-jitsu or something like with wrestling or whatever, like... Um, yeah, it, it's it's gonna hurt. Like, it really is gonna hurt when you press on it. Uh, and it can also break. So, yeah, you don't really want that to happen. But then there's quite a lot of other sports that is like, uh, sure. Like, yeah, you can totally do it. Like, I mean, uh, with climbing, I'm super happy. Super happy that I'm still able to do that. Uh, and I mean, it's quite a dynamic sport, like there's a lot of movement happening there. I was really worried that I, that, that the ICD was going to prevent me from doing some kind of movements with my arm when climbing. But man, when I, when I got the green light, uh, because basically the first month you're not allowed to do sports, uh, mainly it's, yeah, just to kind of heal. But when I was at my climbing wall looking at it, so anxious and excited to go and climb again. Um, and I was on the wall climbing. Uh, it was just like, God, oh, wow. It, like, it was amazing. Like, it was so amazing to feel that this was not going to prevent me from being able to sports, from doing my sports. Uh, but then basically anything, like of any other sports where you have to move your arm or like running for example uh in the beginning i also thought with running that it was gonna be like too like much up and down this that it was gonna move too much and hurt the whole time but this sticks i mean this stays really in place like it's really it doesn't move really the only sport that i do that they say no to is diving uh which i'm really sad about mainly they say no to it because I mean, underwater when something would happen, uh, if the ICD would go off, for example, uh, yeah, it's a bit more harder to get you up again. I'm, I'm somewhere hopeful that maybe in a couple of years when things have been just stable, that they might give me a green light to do it. Uh, but let's see, you know, that's something for in the future. With other sports like snowboarding, I haven't gone snowboard yet uh it's probably something that if i would ask my doctor you would say no i think because it's also more dangerous if you would fall on it uh but there's actually certain t-shirts that i found um maybe there's better options where you can put like some kind of padding in there to put like an extra kind of shell over here uh so i am thinking of buying that um because also with climbing outdoors like indoors no problem uh, I feel pretty safe and comfortable to climb just like that with this ICD uh, kind of exposed. But then when I went climbing outside, it felt less comfortable. Because like if you kind of go with this against a rock, it hurts. Like it doesn't feel nice. So I'm probably going to buy some something like that. And then maybe like you could use that for, I don't know, snowboarding or something like that. And maybe... Maybe for a contact sport like uh, Thai box or something. There could be possibilities out there if you do a fighting sport that you could still do it. This is maybe going to sound a little bit funny um, because it's basically what you're doing right now. I would recommend you or suggest at least to you to limit 
what you search. What I mean with that is not like you can search uh, on Google on, you know, living with an ICD, how it is. It's basically with everything. Uh, if you just have a some symptoms of like just a normal call that you would look it up on Google, you have, I don't know, the craziest diseases. Try to limit what you search for uh, to keep the peace with you and to not have this fear and an anxiety and extra stress because most of the times when there's maybe something happening that you're not sure about what's happening with your ICD or because of surviving a certain cardiac arrest, it's not that that, you know, dramatic as the internet a lot of times shows. If there's something happening that you're not sure about, I would mainly suggest actually to just call your doctor or your cardiologist and ask them what's happening. I haven't really shared this with friends and family or with my girlfriend, and not because I didn't want it to, uh, but mainly because I wasn't sure what was happening but now looking back at it yeah the first yeah three i mean the first two months for sure i definitely had symptoms of depression um and i mean like i study psychology so I, I do have some understanding of the symptom symptoms they were there i there was some kind of a dominant sadness hanging uh, around in me the whole time basically in those two months it is something that is normal or that can happen with uh, brain damage or when your brain yeah is damaged because of something uh, as a lack of oxygen it is in a way normal and i just want to really uh, po point that out that it might happen to you as well uh, maybe it doesn't happen to everyone i also don't mean that it was severe to me although it could be for you more severe, right? It's just so pers personal. I would actually recommend what I didn't do, although like I said, I would have done it if this would have stretched a bit more longer at the point like after four months now, I would have totally shared this with someone. Uh, but I would recommend to, I mean, to share it with friends and family uh, or to someone that you trust that you're just feeling like this, just for them to know that. I think it's really important uh, for people to know this uh, so that it just can be kind of extra there uh, supportive to you. But it will it will fade away uh, when you recover. It will fade away. Everyone around me uh, basically said like, oh, you should rest, you should do nothing. It is a good piece of advice <laughs> to rest, to allow yourself to rest. Yeah, listen to your body, right? Just if you feel tired and exhausted, you feel like laying down, lay down. Right. I would also say that um, it is somewhere I feel that that doing something to continue doing something was a really helpful thing to do in the recovery process. That's what I personally feel. Right. To not just do nothing, nothing for a whole month or two or so. When I was in the hospital, I kind of immediately already started studying a little bit and started working a little bit. Not a lot, like after an hour or two, I was like, all right, this is the maximum that I can do right now. It is good to not just sit and do nothing because that is not a great way to per se recover because uh, you're not using your brain and you're not using your body, which is something that is pretty essential to keep it active, to stay healthy, actually. When I was out of the hospital, I went on walks every day, uh, not for long, but maybe for half an hour, for an hour sometimes. But it helped me so much to just also clear my mind and not always be busy or thinking about what happens. And also because I couldn't do any other sports and I like sporting a lot, it was really helpful to, yeah, go on walks every day. Um, and I would also recommend it. Another one uh, that's maybe yeah, probably quite obvious is to eat healthy. Uh, just especially in recovering those months, you know, be extra focused, I would say a little bit on 
what you eat, you know, uh, you become what you put inside and you can increase the recovering process by eating right. Just take extra good care of yourself for those months. It will help you in the long run so much. I mean, in general, I could always recommend to always eat healthy. Uh, but uh, definitely those months uh, when you went through something like this, it's essential for your body to have the right supply of nutrients to, to recover. Just listen to your body. That's the main thing that I want to say on that, uh, to do that and to truly kind of respect that actually. That's what I did. That's what I tried to do uh, when I felt tired after just a few hours of working or studying. I just kind of put it away and just rested. I would, I mean, I never really sleep with an alarm because I don't have to because I'm self-employed, you know, can kind of make my own schedule. Uh, but in those you know, times that you're at home, uh, because you will likely be uh, allowed to be at home for a month at least uh, to recover. Uh, so you could be away from work. Uh, just uh, try to sleep without an alarm. You know, just let your body wake up itself by its own. That's the most healthiest, healthiest thing that you could possibly do, even if you don't have a sudden cardiac arrest or survive that. But uh, it helps to uh, recover. So just rest by respecting what your body needs. Something that's always helpful uh, when you go through a tough time, like something like this, is to, you know, add a bit more of humor to your life. Uh, that's what I've tried to do during those uh, few months by watching some, you know, sitcom series like Friends and The Big Bang Theory. It, always helps to have some extra humor in your life or to watch some comedians so many benefits to it to laughing and how healthy it is uh, also very healthy for your heart uh, but it just brings yeah some layer of humor again in your life after having gone through something very serious to kind of compensate it something else that i found to be very helpful going through this was to join a support group on Facebook and I will link in the description a couple of good ones that I joined that are very active and uh, seem to be very great ones uh, but not per se to consume all the messages and everything that's been put on there uh, because like I said in one of the tips try to limit that it really felt amazing to feel the amount of you know support by just saying like ah I'm also a new person here with an ICD, uh, living with this now for the rest of my life. And to feel the support and the warmth of other people who also have it. And to know that there's others out there, it's a great feeling that there's some kind of community there. And by joining one, you get a sense of that. And I think that's why it's really uh, helpful to know that you can go to a place if you have a question. Therefore, I could recommend it as well to, uh, to you. Uh, or to someone, you know, who is uh, having uh, an ICD in them now. So I will link it again up in the description, a couple of uh, good ones to join. The, the people close to you, you know, like your parents or, or so, they will likely also really want to talk about this quite traumatic experience. And I feel in a way that I was <laughs> lucky that I had someone very close to me, very close to me there when it happened, uh, my girlfriend, uh, to talk about this. It's, I mean, it's not like a, you know, definitely not something that I wished to happen, you know, or for her to s see this happening. Um, but it happened, now it happened, right? And it has, I feel, strengthened our relationship. I mean, not like, I mean, our relationship in general was great already, but it, it, tough times create a certain bonding that only tough times create, right? And I definitely feel like this did that. You will likely have people around you as well who were maybe not with you when it happened, but also who were a part of, of yeah, of the experience in some way, the stress that they experienced because this happened to you, talk with them uh, about this because it will be very helpful for them but very helpful for you as well and 
it will create a bonding if you can allow yourself to talk about it. And uh, with that, I also want to add this video. That's the amazing thing about YouTube is that there's a comment section down below. If I can also be there for you or if you want to kind of put out your heart, uh, then do that. Please, in the comment section down below, I am here as well creating this video to hopefully, you know, uh, gather people a little bit and uh, to create a, a sense of community in this video, in the, the comment section down below, you know, in the comments there. Uh, and also I will come to reply on your message if uh, yeah, you want some extra support or just want to put out some some words or, or, or anything, empty your heart a bit, then you're very welcome to do that here. It will take time, you know, um, in a way you probably got that <laughs> throughout everything that I shared that it will take time, but I want to emphasize one last time on that, um, because it was something that you don't know how long it's going to take, right? Uh, there's no clear, I don't know, manual that you get on like, all right, it's going to take this long because it's so different for everyone. It can be frustrating. Because somewhere I thought when I was recovering that I was always, you know, gonna feel not 100% good again. And I, when I was at my doctor, kind of always said like, yeah, I mean, when she asked how I was feeling, um, a lot of times I was like, uh, it's still the same. But then I was like, maybe like a month or two months in. And I'm so happy that she reminded me each time like, yeah, all right, but like, it's just only been two months. And... So many friends of mine reminded me of that too, which each time was very helpful. And I want to remind you, therefore, as well, if you if this just happened or if it's been something now that you just had, uh, that you have like uh, two, or two or three months now, this sudden cardiac arrest surviving that, it will take time, you know, the recovering, it will take time. But it will get better. Wounds heal, but they take time. And I think in general, from everything that I've shared, I think you might get a general sense of how it's been. And it's been pretty good. I mean, it's, yeah, like the ICD, um, I'm used to it. Uh, probably will get way more used to it the more time goes, you know, by. And I'm living life like, uh, like basically like, like I used to, you know, my focus is there. I'm working the amounts of hours that I like to work. I'm studying, you know, good again, like with a lot of focus, I'm sporting and moving. I'm doing, you know, everything just like I used to basically. So how has life been? Uh, it's been good. It's been great. <laughs> and likely it will only get better. Hopefully, you know, this will also comfort you if this just happened to you, you know, a sudden cardiac arrest or having an ICD in you, that it is going to get better, you know, it is going to get better. So trust the process. Just to go to the whiteboard over there, what I wrote there, heart warrior, that's what you are. <laughs>